Hello and welcome to another manga spotlight. This one is not an isekai. So <laughs> yeah, we finally got an, uh, a new genre. Uh, this is a slice of life, romance, uh, monster girl, itchy series, a lot of fan service. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the Japanese name because I'm going to completely butcher it. If you guys want to know what it is, I mean, it'll be the title of the video. But the English translation is Tatsumi Matt Alternate Work Exchange Chronicles. Weird name, but that's what it is. <laughs> uh, this series is basically like Monster uh, Musume. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with that, but you pretty much get a guy with a monster girl harem. And there you go. There's the basic plot. So we start off with our main character. His name is Kazushi Hirokora. And he is a huge elf aficionado, maybe I would say. He, he has a very big fetish for elves. Let's just say that. And one day he arrives home and he sees two elves and a um, hobbit inside his, uh, his apartment. Uh, a dark elf and a light elf and of course he's completely confused at first because why the hell are there elves and hobbits <laughs> in my house i think anyone would be confused um i will say that monsters are pretty normal in this world or at least they're they, they kind of live amongst people um these creatures come from uh, a portal though they come from an actual like fantasy world and that they kind of come through into our world but they're not something where like if you see a monster girl you're going to be just completely like what the hell is that um anyways he gets a call from his dad and his dad basically tells him that um these other worlders as they're called uh are going to be staying with our hero for a while and basically he has a special mission and that special mission is to just keep things peaceful because in this world the dark elves and the light elves are at war with each other and right now they're they're kind of have a an, an uneasy ceasefire and the hobbit is actually here to kind of help make sure that you know peace stays between the the two but these two elves are basically they kind of represent their their individual races and they're just supposed to kind of bond with each other a bit and our hero is kind of like the mediator so that's kind of what our story is and these characters kind of have a the first chapter is basically them just kind of um, sh sh showing off their personalities and stuff like that and showing off the world and just kind of an exposition dump until later into the chapter where they wake up and they find that the hobbit has been killed and our hero basically comes to the conclusion okay one of the killers is someone in this room and there's only three of us in the room and it's not the human which means it's got to be one of the elves so then this kind of turns into a murder mystery where they're trying to figure out who this killer is and eventually our hero discovers that the killer is actually the hobbit themselves the hobbit killed herself and committed suicide so that she can get the two elves to go against each other and war will break out so that's the conclusion our hero comes up with and the elves uh, basically reveal their plan and it turns out that the hobbit is actually alive and this whole thing was just staged and they wanted to see if our hero had the brains to be able to do this work as this like mediator between these otherworldly creatures because it's not just elves and hobbits we also get a bunch of other creatures we get like uh orcs for example so we have uh, ogres we have um a lot of fan service, if you haven't noticed. Like, for example, the orgs. Uh, the orgs show up and they just basically want to take a bath. They, they want to experience like the hot springs in, on planet Earth. And so they do that and then they basically tell our hero, you know, one of us is going to marry you. So it, it's very like cliche. A lot of fan service, as anyone who's watching this on Bish, you can see. For anyone who's watching this on um, YouTube, you're just going to get the one image throughout the entire video just because of copyright reasons. Uh, even though I should be safe in terms of copyright because I'm not showing everything and I'm doing this as a review. YouTube has kind of dropped the ball on that. And has, I've, been, I've, I've, received, I've received strikes before from my reviews. So that's why from now on on YouTube, you only see the one image. 
um, on BitChute. I will be actually showing some of these panels and this is like the first time I've actually had to mark my video as not safe for work even though I have kind of uh, hidden some of the stuff so that it's not for, full on hentai. Um, this series is basically, <laughs> is basically softcore porn. That's the best way I can explain it. It's borderline hentai. Like all, all it would take is just a couple more drawings and this would basically be hentai as you'll see in a moment. Um, but like one of the other uh, creatures is uh, the Demon King, who of course happens to be a cute lolly. And of course, we got to loot the lolly in this series. <laughs> Even though I'm I'm one of those people, you know what? If you want to have a lolly, fine, but don't don't loot the lolly. Like I don't know, it's just weird to me. <laughs> like I've had characters that like I've when I say I've fallen in love with lolly characters, I don't mean like romantically or anything like that. I just mean like I love their character. I think they're like they're awesome. For example, the lolly twins in Persona 5. Like I think they're just so cool. Like I like the lolly twins. Um, and especially like when they bust out their chainsaw and stuff, but I would not lose them. I would not romance them. <laughs> so we get that here though. We, we get the, the demon king who's a lolly really gets looted. And, uh, again, we, we get a bunch of other characters. We get like slime girls. We get, um, fairies. We get a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so I will kind of explain the most recent chapter just because i think that kind of sets the tone for what exactly this series is so we have our character waking up completely naked and he discovers that he got completely wasted along with everybody else like all these other girls they kind of had like a celebration for his 20th birthday and everybody got drunk and he passed out and then he wakes up and one of the other tenants in the building who um i believe i can't remember if he is actually part of the monster faction he is currently dating one of the monster girls who lives in the tenant he also lives in the the apartment tenant as well anyways he you know says happy birthday and congratulations on losing your virginity and so basically this whole chapter is oh crap who did i lose my virginity to because he realizes it's like he could have lost his virginity to basically um everybody and uh, only one of the other characters that lives in this tenant is actually a human. She's uh, the landlady. Everyone else is a monster girl. So there's a 99% chance that he's lost his virginity to a non-human. And he's trying to figure out who it is. So we have stuff where we have him going to the landlady and asking, like, hey, what happened, uh, what happened last night? And she's, like, super embarrassed. And she's like, I can't believe I did that with you. And he's like, oh, my God, did I lose it to her? And then she explains that she got really drunk and she started masturbating in front of our hero. And then she kind of passed out from embarrassment. So that rules her out. Then he goes to check on the fairy and he's like, you know, did I lose my virginity to you? And then the fairy basically admits that she got drunk and she gave him a blowjob. And we actually, as you can see on the bit shoot, have a panel where she, um, yeah, where you can actually see what she's doing. Of course, the penis is uh, not shown, but it's clear exactly what she's doing. And, I mean, she even says, you know, I put your C word in my mouth. So, yeah, again, this is basically heavily fan service, uh, borderline hentai. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in itchy fan service stuff, definitely check this one out. Um, he goes and checks out the... Uh, the orc twins and realizes that um they basically got drunk and started making out with each other so not only do we have fan service and internal species borderline hentai but we also got incest <laughs> yeah this series has everything uh so yeah uh then he comes across the, the the demon king and then he realizes the Demon King is one behind all this. Uh, what happened was she applied a magic that kind of muddled everyone's thoughts and stripped them all of their reasoning. And she kind of waited for everybody to basically pass out from being drunk. And then when that happened, she went into the room, got naked, and tried to sleep with our hero who was passed out and basically discovered that her parts were too tiny to fit our main character and so he realizes okay so it wasn't the demon king 
So who the hell was it? Because all these women that I've interviewed, every single one of them has done loot things to me, but none of them has technically um, popped my virginity. And then he discovers, wait a second, there's actually one person who I didn't talk to. And it's actually the guy in the very beginning. The guy basically, uh, they're like looking at the stunts and the guy's like, so did you figure it out? And he's like, yeah. And the guy's like, all right, so what do you want to do about it? He's like, yeah, I've, I'm just going to take things as, you know, as it is. And, uh, you know, we're just pretend that none of this ever happened. And he's like, all right. And then right before the chapter ends, the uh, guy asks, uh, so um, your ass, like, is it okay? And uh, <laughs> that's how it ends. So basically, the twist ending was that he lost his virginity to the dude. <laughs> and there you go. There's uh, there's your monster girl borderline hentai fan service heavy series. And this is basically the kind of humor that you're going to be getting with this. So definitely don't don't share this with your kids. Don't read this at work. But um, it's not exactly hentai. Uh, it's just very, very itchy, very, very fan servicey, very, very lewd. But it's done in a nice, funny, comedic, slice of life way. And uh, yeah, I enjoy the series. Like, I mean, I've I've mentioned it before. Like, I've I've read like, I read pretty much everything. <laughs> so I've I've read things that are even way more lewd than this. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I love everything. I like I say Guys. I like Romance. I like Yuri. I like uh, Slice of Life. I like the Edgelord stuff. Um, I like... I like it all. Uh, as long as it has, like, a good story and characters that don't annoy the hell out of me, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Um, I especially prefer more of the stuff like this. It, not necessarily the lunas, but just in the humor. Like I like I like stuff that are like very lighthearted and just kind of leave you like laughing, you know, when the chapters are done, which is definitely what this series does. So yeah, I highly recommend this if you're a fan of like Monster Girls, if you're a fan of harems, if you're a fan of like rom coms, if you're a fan of Slice of Life. That's pretty much what this is. It's like all that together. This is basically if I can describe this in three words, as you can probably see from the thumbnail, it's Monster Girl, Harem, Slice of Life. With a lot of fan service, <laughs> if you guys haven't, uh, if you guys can't, c couldn't tell by now, a lot of fan service. Let's just say that the panels that I'm showing on my BitChute channel, they can get worse in terms of lewdness. Uh, they can get a lot worse. Yeah. So, anyways, that's uh, Tatami Matt Alternate Work Exchange Chronicles, and then of course. It has the uh, the Japanese version for the title, which I am not even going to try to pronounce because I'll butcher the hell out of it. Um, I Seikai is in the title, despite the fact that it's not, it's not really an Isekai. It's not our hero getting transported to another world. It's more like otherworldly creatures getting transported to Earth, and then he has to take care of them. So I wouldn't necessarily call it an Isekai, though. I guess it kind of technically is. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me what you guys think. If you guys have any recommendations for anything in terms of mangas, in terms of comic books, let me know and I'll check them out. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have a good one. Hope to see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>